Fentanyl is regarded as one of the most deadly drugs in the world and one of the major killers of Americans who abuse narcotics. In recent years, there's been an exponential growth of deaths from consumption of non-medically prescribed fentanyl. In 2016, synthetic opioids, primarily illegal fentanyl, were responsible for over 19,000 deaths. That's up from around 3,000 in 2010. In 2018, there were more than 31,000 American deaths attributed to consumption of synthetic opioids. Mexican drug cartels are flooding the US with mass quantities of counterfeit prescription pills, including fentanyl, often trafficked in pill form. China produces the main ingredient used to make fentanyl, smuggled by the Mexican drug cartels. Dr. Louise Shelley is founder and director of the Terrorism, Transnational Crime and Corruption Center at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia. Dr. Shelley is a leading expert on the relationship among terrorism, organized crime and corruption, as well as human trafficking, transnational crime and terrorism with a particular focus on the former Soviet Union. Dr. Shelley also specializes in illicit financial flows and money laundering. Dr. Shelley, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure to be with you. Can you explain what synthetic opioids are and why these drugs are of concern in the US to public health authorities and law enforcement? They're a great concern because they are literally killing tens of thousands of people annually. And even during the pandemic, the death rate from individuals consuming synthetic opioids seems to be increasing. Is illicit uh, fentanyl the most dangerous and the most consumed of this type of drug? Well, it's not the most consumed because it's often inserted into other drugs. So you put a few gram, not grams, few drops of fentanyl in heroin or in cocaine and you combine the drugs and then they become especially fatal. Um, but beyond fentanyl, there's an even worse formula called carfentanyl that's even more deadly. In what way? The dose is so much stronger. Um, it's just literally kills people on the spot. I was reading an article about a, um, one of the manufacturers of all places in, uh, in the Netherlands. And it was a Chinese guy and he was saying that his job is to make it as dependent as possible. And uh, he said it was a, a great market to be in because I think it's about a dollar to make and they sell it for 10 times at least that amount. Uh, that, that enthusiasm must be just horrific to, uh, to people like yourself. Well, I mean, there are illicit entrepreneurs, these criminals. And so they think of how they can make money with enormous advantage and where the competitive advantage is. And so the profit margins are greater in synthetic drugs. They're closer to their markets, so there's less chance of detection. And in an era in which we're facing climate change, then you're less dependent on the vagaries of the weather that may wipe out your plantation. And so you derived or developed a synthetic drug that is much more potent and easier to develop. In, say, a yearly terms, what's the, the value of the drug the, for the whole US market at the moment? We don't know because there's so little accurate measurement of how much is coming in, how much is being used, and you only need a tiny amount of this drug to cause enormous amounts of damage. So you can be buying small packets for very limited amounts of money and cause enormous damage. So it's not so much the size of the market and the money, but the enormous human costs of it. Homeland Security says it's one of the, um, the scourges basically of all time. And it's um, this huge threat to the, uh, to the US, not only the US, to the rest of the world. What can be done to, 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 to halt this, this progress, which it is progressing uh, you know, beyond our, our comprehension? I think we need to do a lot more about looking at supply chains 
and not just at the end point where it's delivered to the market. And that's certainly not being done. So some of this fentanyl is being produced in legitimate factories without um, government efforts to stop it. Uh, some of it, uh, the precursor chemicals that are contributing to the production in Mexico are coming from legitimate chemical companies. So there's a lot more that needs to be done to be looking at how the legitimate economy is contributing to illicit trade and then tracing the illicit supply chains. And while we have people who are supply chain experts, we have very few people who are experts on illicit supply chains. What are the main sources of supply of fentanyl? I mean, the location, organizations, um, is it all criminal or it, does it start off being quite legal and uh, uh, they get hold of the, uh, the supplies and it then becomes illegal? It, that's a very complicated issue because until recently, China did not have laws against fentanyl. Then it would develop um, a few years ago laws against a certain chemical formulation of fentanyl, but you could tweak it in just a very minor way, but it wouldn't be what is prohibited. And from the research that I've done, a lot of this fentanyl can be tied to websites of legitimate companies in China. But that's not the only source. I mean, it's the major source, but not the only source. In Mexico, there are airplane personnel who are bringing in chemicals from Germany, and there seems to be the beginning of production of the fentanyl uh, precursor chemicals in Mexico itself. So the problem as it develops becomes m more complex. But this is not just a phenomenon of the illicit economy. How has the pandemic affected the supply then of these drugs? And what is the situation today? Has the pandemic really increased? I mean, I read somewhere where they said that um, there are more deaths at the moment because of, uh, of, of these drugs. Uh, that would indicate that the supply has increased or are they making the most of what they have? So let's unpack this question because what you've asked me is quite complex. So in February, if you went on uh, websites looking for fentanyl, some of them were being made in Wuhan, which is one of the centers of the chemical industry in China. And the websites would say, we're, we're temporarily closed, but write us for delivery when we're reopened. So that fentanyl could be ordered online and sent through the postal service and delivered directly to the US. Now there seem to be some more indirect delivery patterns, but they're still operating. And the problem of why there are more deaths in the pandemic is that people have less access to medical care. Their emergency personnel are occupied elsewhere. And the amount of fentanyl that is needed to do enormous harm is relatively minimal. Therefore, um, it could be stockpiled during this period. And even though supply chains were disrupted, they haven't eliminated the supply of the drugs that's available to sell in the United States or Canada or elsewhere in the world. In a recent report from uh, Reuters, a, a senior US uh, DEA agent said, US efforts to nail Latin American drug lords by following the money have become much more difficult. And quote, I can't emphasize this enough. The involvement of the Chinese has really complicated all of these schemes. It would seem then that the involvement of the Chinese have added yet another layer to this already complicated process. I think it's made it more complicated, but I think there are things that the U.S. government could be doing by using much more advanced data analytics that they're not doing. So one needs to be creative, but because there are international trails, um, there are ways to follow them, and they're not as sophisticated at this as they should be. Is that then just um, um, 
just twiddling while Rome burns. Surely they have the resources to be at least up to speed with what's happening. It's not a question of resources. It's if you call resources human resources, then the kind of people that have these skill sets are more likely to go into the corporate and the business world um, than they are into the government that hasn't specifically been recruiting individuals with high level data analytics, AI capability, and other things that you need to help unmask and dismantle these networks. Can the Chinese do more or are they part of the problem? The Chinese authorities, that is. Oh, there's certainly more that the, that the Chinese could be doing. I mean, this, it's not very hard to find the websites that have been selling the fentanyl. Um, there certainly have been efforts to clamp down on some of the websites, but not as systematically as is needed. So what can be done then to greatly reduce supply and harm of these drugs? I think much more can be done to look at the illicit supply chain from start to finish, which requires understanding of how the drugs are um, advertised, understanding who's behind these advertisements, and then mapping the supply chains and understanding who are the illicit actors and how this converges with the legitimate economy. And not enough has been done to do this kind of mapping to address the problem. It's a horror problem. Um, it does it, I, mean, I know people in Australia that have been affected by this. So it's not just, you know, just not just a, a US centric problem. It's a global problem that's just getting out of hand. So do you think the, the education process or the not re-educating, but the educating of, of just the masses to say, this is how bad it is. There is nothing glamorous about it. Just talk to a family that's lost someone. Do you think we need to change our attitudes? Absolutely. I think there needs to be much more public education and awareness of how fatal these drugs are, how they're combined in ways that people are not aware with things that they're buying and consuming. And I think there needs to be a much more public discussion of this problem. Mm. And certainly the pandemic has overshadowed this. Mm. And this problem has been very much pushed to the back burner. What impact has declining supply levels recently had on the price and, and deaths? It hasn't had that much impact. I mean, there are some drugs that have increased in price um, for drugs that are needed in larger quantities than fentanyl. But it's not as if there's just been terrible shortages because there have been stockpiles. There's still the possibility of moving things across borders. Postal services used in different ways with different um, patterns of movement. So there's a lot of sophistication and flexibility that the criminal networks are using. Mm. Terrifying problem. It's um, back to the, uh, the glamorization of crime. Uh, sure, we, um, you know, we, we're all interested, but the end of it, you think, well, great job that the DEA have done, fabulous job there, but you know, almost what a cool business to be in, to live on the edge. And um, that's, that's one edge we don't want to be on because we will topple over before we know it. Uh, Dr. Shelley, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome and have a good, have a good day.